Hello, I'm Brooke Lovelace, Executive Director of the Iowa Developmental Disabilities Council. Every five years, the DD Council, alongside with advocates and other community stakeholders, develops what is called a, a five-year state plan that outlines what the council is going to do the next five years to create positive change for people with disabilities. Um, this plan is developed with much input from advocates um, and our 24 member of our council. And this takes over a two year period. Um, the draft plan is then shared with the public to receive public input. Um, it was during this public input period that we're currently in still, that it was suggested that we actually um, video reading through the plan while pro providing some additional information about the plan while also having an American Sign Language interpreter interpret the plan for us. And that is why we have Sue here with us today. Thanks so much, Sue, for being here. Um, so that's what we are doing today is reading through our plan. So just some background information for you. Um, the Iowa Developmental Disabilities Council believes that all Iowans with disabilities, as well as their families, should be included in the communities um, where they choose to live. Um, to achieve this vision, we work with people with disabilities and their families to give them a voice about the types of supports they need and make sure they receive these supports. Um, our work includes advocacy, uh, policy improvements, and efforts to make the community stronger. We created a statewide network of advocates that we call Iowans with Disabilities in Action to help us reach our vision. Together, over the next five years, we do plan to create positive change throughout Iowa. Um, our mission at the DD Council is to create change with and for Iowans with dis developmental disabilities work, learn, and play in the community of their choosing. So um, just to let you know, we do have three goals. Our first goal is what we call an advocacy goal. And this goal is to develop strong advocates and leaders who create the change that they want. We have three objectives under this goal. The first one is to annually increase the number of Iowans with disabilities and family members who engage in civic and political decision-making. The second one is annually increase the number of Iowans with disabilities, including young adults and their family members who lead and mentor others to take on leadership roles and projects that, do, that does increase the inclusion of people with disabilities in community living. Our third objective under this goal is um, by 2026, we will increase the number of Iowans with disabilities who successfully advocate for their own healthcare needs. And we're gonna go into a little bit more detail about each one of these here. So our first objective, um, when we say we're gonna annually increase the number of Iowans with disabilities and family members who engage in the civil and political decision-making process. This basically is talking about um, increasing those that are involved with things that happen at um, the state and federal legislative process. Um, and so um, a lot of these activities are around that. So our activities that we have listed here are to host local capital days and town hall meetings. And so what we're meaning here is that um, if folks want to get together and learn more about what bills and what policies are being processed or being talked about at the Capitol, um, we'll help them do that. And we'll host um, either virtual or in present meetings to do that, along with town hall meetings where we will help advocates get together with their um, local legislators in their local communities. Um, provide advocacy training and advertise our ability to offer this assistance. Um, this is another one of our activities under this objective. So basically this is, um, and this is actually an activity the council has been doing for a long time is that we want to help advocates um, be the best that they can be. And so we do offer basic training for this um, and, and a more advanced training for this. Um, but we don't really put the word out that we're doing that. So that's, uh, it, this is a little bit of offering that training. 
and then making sure that we advertise that we're doing that. Um, then our next one activity under, under this objective is to provide voter training and again, advertise that we're doing this um, to both community and folks that are still living in facilities. Um, again, voter training is something that we've been doing for a few years now. We're, we're very passionate about um, increasing voter turnout for those with disabilities. And so we do offer those trainings and we're gonna make it a little bit more known that we actually do that. Our next activity is to host and support uh, what we call um, our Make Your Mark conference. And so this is a self-advocacy conference that we've been doing for six years now. Um, and we also want to support other advocacy conferences as well. So I'm um, not just the one that we put on together, but if there are other family and self-advocacy conferences out there, we want to be supportive of those um, activities as well. And then our um, next activity under here is educate and inform the public through a publication policy, the publication policy of publication. I always get confused, but or get those two words confused, um, but we call infinite. Um, and so uh, we use that and social media posts and emails um, to make sure that people know what's being talked about at the Capitol and at, at the federal level with our state and federal senators. So making sure that information gets out there. Um, our last activity under this objective is to increase the number of advocates that are connected in our what we call our Iowans with Disabilities in Action Network, which is basically a network of self and family advocates that want to come together and work on these types of things, work on advocacy and civic and political um, decision making. Um, we want to, we've got so far, we've got um, over 9,000 people that um, are involved in our network, we want to increase that. We want to have more people hooked up with the DD Council to work on these types of things. So our next objective, um, objective two, this is still under our overall arching um, advocacy goal. Um, this is to increase the number of Iowans with disabilities, including young adults, which is important, and their family members who lead and mentor others and take on leadership roles and projects that increase the inclusion of people with disabilities in the community living. So basically, um, to make this simple, this is what we call our, our leadership project, where we help um, our young advocates and our um, adult advocates and our family advocates to take on leadership roles. So just think of this as, as the leadership objective that the council works on. And so some of our activities under here um, is to prepare self-advocates to train others to register to vote and then to actually vote. So then that's not necessarily the council helping that, but it's other advocates working together to increase people, um, decrease the turnout for voters, especially with, amongst people with disabilities. Um, the second is to support self and family advocates and council members by hosting their own town hall meetings and other public events and um, with local and state leaders in their community. So as we talked about before, if folks want help doing their um, own events, we can, we can help give them some resources so they can do that with or without the DD council's involvement. Um, the next one is to support a peer mentoring program such as um, what we currently have going on, which is called the Community Ambassadors Program. Um, so again, uh, another project helping mentors or developing mentors to help others um, increase the inclusion um, of getting out in the community. Um, that our next activity, support the mentoring program in the talent bank to increase the number of people with disabilities on boards and commissions. So this activity, um, currently, if you want to apply for a board or a commission in the state of Iowa, you um, use a web-based system that they call the talent, the talent Bank. And this is relatively new. Um, it's been up and running for two years. Um, it's, it's a project that the DD Council did invest in. Um, but in, in that overall project, there is a, com a mentoring component of that. Um, and so it's supporting that, making sure people know that mentoring opportunity um, in that web-based system is available. So it would hook somebody up who wants to be on a board or commission with somebody else that's also on a board or commission to find out a little bit more about how that works and, and why that's, um, what, what some of the duties are, what some of the responsibilities are if you're going to, to become on that board or commission. 
Um, and then this is another way to try and help increase those with disabilities to become, to be more present on boards and commissions, not just like the DD Council Board, but other boards and commissions that our state has. Um, our next activity here is host outreach and awareness campaigns on opportunities available on commissions and boards at the local and state level. So you can kind of see this is there, these are all kind of related where we're wanting to increase the amount of people um, with disabilities that serve on boards and commissions. Um, the next project or next activity, I should say, is to create an intern position within the Iowans Disabilities in Action for a person with a disability to actually assist with the training and projects. Um, and one of the ways, some of the ways to do that is to work with um, the Realizing Educational and Career uh, Helps Program. It's called REACH. Um, the Des Moines Area Community College also has a program that has interns and then um, vocational rehabilitation um, also has a project um, that can help with interns. And so basically what this is saying is that we would like somebody with a disability that's interested in being in this advocacy role um, to help us with our projects. Um, and so we're looking for interns. That's what this activity is about. And then the next activity is to continue our partnership to provide um, what we call the Youth Leadership Academy. Um, and this is a project we do with the Center for Disabilities and Development, um, the Department of Human Rights, um, the Center for Independent Living um, out of the Iowa City area. Um, and this is basically um, just a, an academy that we've been doing to uh, increase youth opportunity, youth leadership opportunities for younger adults. We still have some more activities under this objective that we'll get to. This is a big objective, as you can tell. Um, so another activity under this objective is um, to work with our DD network partners. And so that includes the Center for Disabilities and Development at the University of Iowa um, and the um, Child Health Specialty Clinics that's also at the University of Iowa to develop youth councils at the local level. Um, so getting um, youth involved with things that happened, you know, on city councils um, and, and that local level um, to get folks and, you know, get that youth um, input more involved with folks with disabilities more involved at that more local level. Um, the next activity there is to work with the DD network to train and mentor people on how to be effective members of boards, councils, and commissions. So, you know, we can get folks appointed to those boards and councils and commissions, but it's really important that they be an integral part of that commission or board, that they provide input, that they volunteer for opportunities on those councils, serve as leadership roles on those councils. So they're just not, they're more than just being present, but they actually are, are um, active on that border commission. So that's what that activity is about. And then the next one is actually working with boards and commissions to make sure they are more inclusive with people with disabilities. On to our next one. So this is, again, just to recap, this is objective three that's still under our overall advocacy goal. And this is to increase the number of Iowans with disabilities who successfully advocate for their own healthcare needs. This one um, was actually developed, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we, uh, we received a lot of input from our um, advocates, a lot of community stakeholder members, family members, about what the, the council should prioritize, what they should work on in the next five years. And health was overwhelmingly one of the top priorities over across it. Um, all of the people that um, provided input to us. And that historically has not been something that the council um, that the council has worked on. Um, so we decided the best way to address that is to help folks advocate for their own health care needs. And so this this objective was added um, to our state plan this year. Um, so that some of the activities that we have under here is that with the DD network and other state partners, we are going to develop a resource toolkit, to provide health and healthcare advocacy education for people with disabilities um, and those that are supporting them. Um, so just some tools about how they can you know, visit with their doctor, what questions they should ask, how they find a doctor, what if they don't like their doctor, those types of things. So giving them the tools that they can, they can do that type of advocacy work at that, at that healthcare level, at their healthcare level needs. 
Um, and then the next one then is to work with the special health care needs advisory group to educate emergency medical services workers on how to work with people with disabilities. And I believe now we are done with our advocacy goal. So we're gonna move on now to our second goal, which we call our systems change goal. And here we are going to improve policy and practice that positively impacts people with disabilities. And we have two objectives under here. And our first objective is very wordy. And so we'll break it down here for you in just a bit. But our first objective is to annually target at least three key policy proposals. So this can be legislative executive orders, um, rules that are being announced um, to identify opportunities for us as the council to educate policymakers about the impact that those specific policies might have and make recommendations to ensure the policies align with the principles of the Developmental Disabilities Count, the Act that we fall under, and then also our legislative priorities of the council. So that's pretty long. We'll break it down here in just a little bit. Um, and then objective two is then with the use of our DD Council resources, people with disabilities and or their family members will annually propose new legislation and or policy changes and improvements about an issue that's important to them. So the first one is basically the, the council, um, our council members and our staff um, target these proposals. We help educate lawmakers um, on how they're, what they're proposing, what they're strategizing about, what they're talking about, how that impacts people with disabilities, either positively or um, negatively. So that first one's kind of, this is the work the council's doing. That next one is helping um, our advocates do that work, help them de you know, develop policy changes, help them propose new legislation on issues that are important to them. So that's how we, those two are a little bit different. One is the council doing um, the educating. The second one is having our advocates throughout the state doing that education. So that first objective, I'm not going to reread that to you because it's pretty wordy, but again, it's the work that the council does to educate lawmakers. Um, so some of the activities that we're going to do under here, um, research state and federal public policies and trends, and that's something that we continue to do, monitor every day um, to see what's, what, what is happening out there that we need to be aware of. And then the second one is to facilitate strong relationships with community organizations, which is something that we also um, really do on a daily basis. Um, the third one then is to collaborate with our DD network partners, which again, this is Disability Rights Iowa and the Center for Disabilities and Development to identify what we think some of the issues and, and concerns and needs are. Four is to foster relationships with policymakers to influence policy. Um, we would like our folks at the state capitol to know who the DD Council is and to think of us as experts. So if, if they're proposing legislation that could have some impact on people with disabilities, they know to call us um, and, and ask our opinion and get education from us about what we think that might um, what that impact might be. And so um, that, that's what that activity is getting at. Um, the next one, participate and provide public comment in commissions and council meetings. Um, just for an example here, some of these council meetings might be the mental health and disability services meet um, council, the medical assistance advisory council, the autism council, the brain injury council, and the Olmstead task force. Um, and that's just an example of some of the commissions and advisory councils that are out there that all work on disability issues. Um, and so we need to be working together and so participate in their meetings and vice versa, they participate in ours. And then we, um, you know, we comment when we think um, it's appropriate for us to do so. Um, and then with council members and DD partners, develop an annual list of policy priorities that increase community living for people with disabilities. And we do this yearly. Um, we develop um, what our priorities are that we want um, our, our state and federal leg legislators to think about when they're at the Capitol discussing and, and developing and proposing um, legislation. And the last one here is educate policymakers and other state leaders about the importance of gathering input from people with disabilities and sharing, and this is very important, and sharing information in plain language. 
Um, and our council also needs to work better at, at making sure that we're getting information out there and language that's understandable by all. Objective two then, so this one to go to just to recap is that um, this is having our advocates be the ones that educate um, policymakers. And so some of the activities under here is to use our, um, our public policy publication that we call Infinet um, to inform Iowans with disabilities and their families about what policies and impact community living in, what the policies that are being talked about that impact community living and inclusion. Um, and so um, Infinet is one of our resources that we use to educate people all the time. Um, it, it keeps track of what bills are being discussed. Um, it also helps folks craft messages. So if there's a bill that's being discussed that people either approve or disapprove of, what can they do about that? Can they, how do they craft a message to their legislator um, to talk about, to tell them about how they feel about um, how that might impact their lives. So all of that is through um, our infant, what we call our infinite um, resource that we have. Um, so that's that first activity. Um, and these are all really kind of co-related. So the second one is to share grassroots sex, success stories of people advocating for themselves um, locally and at the state and federal levels. Um, and so this one here, um, when folks are using our resources and they have they have connected with the legislator and they've had some success with that, we want to share those stories um, so people can realize that it really does work to have those conversations with your legislators. That third one, support and collaborate with the Iowa Family Leadership Training Institute to help families advocate for themselves and others. Um, so this is a training, leadership training that already exists. Um, it's at the University of Iowa that the DD Council partners with, uh, making sure they have the resources they need to be able to um, educate their, their legislators, their policymakers. Um, and then lastly on this one, host regular po public policy calls with advocates and stakeholders during the legislative session for discussion and questions about proposed legislation. And earlier when we were talking about our advocacy goal, we called this our capital chats but it's our at least monthly meetings that we have to let, let, let our advocates know what's, what's being discussed at the Capitol and ask questions um, that we can maybe help answer for them. Okay, we're on to our third and final goal. And this we call our capacity building goal. Um, and this goal here is strengthening, the, strengthening communities to support people with disabilities. And so this has three objectives under it. Our first one is through annual training, technical assistance and resources. The DD Council will collaborate with the DD network, state agencies and community programs to improve competitive employment outcomes for people with disabilities. Our second objective um, by September, uh, 30, 2027, the DD Council will partner with the DD Network, state agencies, and other community programs to invest in at least two projects to demonstrate new approaches to direct services, enhance, enhance systems, respond to emergent issues, or eliminate barriers to access to access and use of the community services. So this gets to um, some of the other of our priorities that were identified um, with that input that we talked about that we received from all of our stakeholders, um, where they wanted the council to work on things such as transportation, housing, assistive technology, health, education, and emergency pr preparation. Well, that is a lot of stuff um, for the council to take on on um, being a small organization, but we can partner with other state agencies um, and, and invest in those, those partnerships to help um, other agencies work on those types of issues. And so this one's kind of our flexible goal where we're leaving it up um, to our DD partners um, and work with them to figure out what some other things that we can help support that help address some of those needs with, with those priorities, those transportation, the housing, the assistive technology, health education, and emergency prep. And then our last objective under here, um, by 2026, in collaboration with our DD network partners and the Iowa Department of Human Rights, the DD Council will develop relationships with underserved populations, um, which, can, which can include, um, but not limited to, um, African Americans, 
um, Latinos, Asian Americans, and American Indi Indians. Um, and particularly, we're looking at folks in these underserved populations in rural areas of Iowa. Um, to increase the number of people that are aware of the DD Council and use the council resources, and then also participate in council activities. So we'll dive into a little bit more detail about this. So the objective one um, is to work on um, our work with our partners on um, basically increasing and in competitive employment for people with disabilities. That's the most simplest way to say this. Um, and so our first activity is to continue a, a long partnership that we have with Iowa Vocational Rehabilitation and a coalition of folks that we call the Iowa Coalition on Integrated Employment um, and other DD network partners that we've mentioned previously to provide training to um, our community rehab providers. So basically um, provider agencies that help people out to get jobs in the community, help provide training opportunities to, the, to those folks providing that support. So they are, are um, trained as experts to be able to go out and do that. Um, our second activity is again through our infinite resources that we've talked about quite a bit already and our Iowans with Disabilities and Action Network um, promote what's called National Disabilities Awareness Month. Um, and various other activities and local state of, with state officials and legislators. So this is a this this National Awareness Month happens in October, and it's a way to help recognize the uh, great contributions people with disabilities make in the workforce and how we need to continue to enhance and increase those opportunities and and, and share those success stories as well too. So that's what that activity is around. Um, and, and, the, and the third activity is very similar to that. Um, we need to share employment success stories and continue to get those out there on social media and, and news outlets and all of that. Um, the fourth activity under this is to sponsor and collaborate um, with DD partners. Um, and so our DD partners here are the Autism Society, um, Association of People Supported Employment First, our vo vocational rehabilitation, and others to host um, specific employment specific specific employment conferences to help people with disabilities and their families. So conferences that are focused um, primarily on how to get people employed. So that's that final activi activity there. Objective two, um, and so this is the one that we're talking about investing in, in projects to help um, reduce or eliminate barriers around transportation, housing, assistive technology, health, education, and emergency prep, preparation. Um, and so the activities around here is to figure out with our community partners, um, what are the issues, what are the emerging issues that the council should address and how do we do that? And who, who what's the best organization or entity that's out there that's willing to work on that um, with some council investment to back them? Um, and then the second one is develop and communicate informational briefs on lessons learned. So when we are investing in these projects, uh, we need to talk about them afterwards. Were they successful? Were they not successful? If not, why? Um, and make sure that, that, that we educate others you know, on what we learned. All right, folks, we are now on our last objective. Um, and this is again under our um, capacity building goal. Uh, this one is what we call our targeted disparity goal um, that's required by the federal government for us to pick um, a population to work with that maybe is, um, is not, does not get the same resources that other folks do in the community. And so, and the council has some freedom to determine what they, what they wanna work on. And so for our, um, for our plan this year, uh, we um, would like to partner with Department of Human Rights um, and start developing relationships with the underserved populations um, that we do not have good relationships with, and especially in rural areas. Um, there's a lot of folks out there in rural areas that are not aware of the council and the resources that we have and do not participate in council activities. Um, we want to fix that. And so that's what this objective is about. Um, but first we need to develop those relationships. And so that's what some of the activities are around here. Um, seek out opportunities um, with our council members that are represented across the state um, to host and sponsor community conversations in those local areas um, and do some, do some awareness. 
Um, the second one is to partner with the Department of Human Rights to host vests and other rural communities. Um, and then try to continue and sustain those relationships that we've developed um, to figure out how the council may be able to, to address some of those unmet needs. Not unmet needs. And that is our state plan. Um, we are, as I mentioned um, when we started, we are still um, in our co public comment period. So people can still submit public comment to this after you've listened to this video um, or, 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 just, or have read it in another way. Um, there's the email address there that's stateplan at iowaddcouncil.org. Um, or you can actually phone us too at 800-452-1936. Um, and our public comment period is open for another couple of weeks. Um, but even when that closes, we would love to hear from stakeholders um, about um, any, any projects or input that they want to give about what the work is that the council's doing. Um, so don't feel like it once the public comment period ends, and that's the last time that you have to, to visit with the council because that's definitely not. Um, so thank you so much for listening for today.